Hello, my name is Dr. Norquist, and today we're going to be talking about uh, the biofilm that's located in the gingival sulcus when a patient has either gingivitis or periodontal disease. Over the last two or three years, we've been studying different compounds to see if we could kill the bacteria in the plaque that's located in the gingival sulcus. We tried betadine, and we used betadine for many years thinking that it would kill the bacteria and then we could do a prophy and if it was bleeding it wouldn't matter because the bacteria was killed. However, uh, myself and another colleague noticed that uh, when we took a sample of the plaque that after two minutes of betadine in there uh, that it didn't have any effect on the spirochetes and the spirochetes seemed to be even kind of mad that the betadine was put in there and a colleague from uh, Seattle found the same thing and so we tested it and found that betadine has no effect on spirochetes within the biofilm plaque in the gingival sulcus. So based on that we decided to look at other things. So we're uh, in what we're going to show today is what collodial silver, 25 percent bleach, and then we found another compound. It's kind of a combination of herbals and honey and that seemed to be uh, the most effective in killing spirochetes and gingival sulcus. So here we go, we're going to show you that video and each step along the way. Thanks. Okay, today we're going to be testing a new product. It's a collodial silver. And um, what we're going to be doing is using it as a solution, uh, a pre profi solution to see if we can um, kill the bacteria in the gingival sulcus before we clean someone's teeth. So what we've done is, the first thing we did is we took a plaque sample from a patient and we have it now mounted on um, a slide and we're observing this on a microscope. And what you see is um, very dense spirochetes. They're, they're long and um, uh, kind of a loose wind and uh, quite numerous. And so what we're going to do is use the collodial silver in the same sulcus. We took half the plaque from the sulcus on the uh, lingual part of the second molar on the lower left. And um, then we're going to, to put the solution in, leave it in for two minutes, and then we're going to uh, have a look at it on the microscope again. Okay. Okay, after two minutes of treatment, uh, we see a few of the spirochetes that have lack motion, but uh, for the most part, the spirochetes are still moving pretty good. So we're going to put more solution in, let it sit for another two minutes, and see if that makes any difference. Okay, even after five minutes with the silver um, colloid, or the, the uh, we didn't see a lot of difference in the um, amount of spirochetes and. And I would say it um, probably didn't have any effect on these spirochetes at all. So you see with the collodial silver, even though it was purported to kill everything on contact, that within the biofilm of the gingival plaque, within the gingival sulcus, the biofilm is so protective that the collodial silver cannot penetrate it to begin even touch the bacteria or even uh, show any signs of effect to the bacteria whatsoever. You find that very interesting. So now what we're going to do is trying um, a concentrated solution of bleach, about a 25%, and then we'll see how that works. I would say there's really not, there's some that are laying around dead. So it did have an effect. Because there's one laying there completely dead. But some aren't. So I don't know what the deal is on these. It's, they're pretty powerful. To, to be able to withstand straight bleach solution. I think that bleach would kill everything. But to our surprise, when we put the bleach with 25% and we kept it in the gingival sulcus, we put it in with a little cannula. So we got it to the bottom of every pocket uh, and everywhere in the mouth. And then when we took a sample after two minutes, we found the same thing that we found with collodial silver and also with uh, betadine that it had no effect on the spirochetes within the gingival sulcus. Very surprising finding. Now there's a theory in treating cancer with chemotherapy 
uh, it's come up um, it was developed in Germany and what they do is they starve the body for glucose or for sugar and then prior to giving chemotherapy they had a little bit of insulin so the cells are totally starved for glucose so what they do is they add glucose in a quarter of the dose of the chemotherapy and the cancer cells because they're so starved for sugar gobble, gobble up the sugar along with the chemotherapy and kill the cancer cells so I was thinking to myself what if we used honey which is actually an antimicrobial in itself and there's a Chinese herbal medicine that has several herbal medicines in uh, this honey material that you take for colds or sore throats and it seems to be very effective so I tried this in the gingival sulcus and to my surprise um, the honey along with the herbals um, had the most effect on the spirochetes than bleach than clodial silver or betadine it had probably 80 percent kill factor in these bacteria it's very surprising to see and I think that this would be a good uh, beginning of research to show that we can actually put something in a gingival sulcus that's all natural that will kill the majority of the sp spirochetes in particular but the microbials in the gingival sulcus so that we can go ahead and safely do a prophy without the uh, possibility of having a ginger uh, without the possibility of having a bacteremia that we now know is very dangerous to have during a bloody prophy. This is very interesting that we have red blood cells but you can see how they've been changed by the and you can see the color change um, it's got a red color there there's a spirochete there but nowhere near the numbers we had before looks like the numbers have been decreased by you know 80 90 95 percent I mean we still see a few active bugs but very very few it's obviously not a hundred percent but I would say that there's one right there now you can see the color change from what we had before to this dark red here's some spore like forms there but no very little movement there is some but very little compared to what we had before lots of spore like forms that you can see now obviously um, they may reacted and, and went to the the spore-like forms that you can see in this picture here, the little round blurbs. Maybe they reacted so fast to these that they obviously didn't like this solution at all. In this sample we have a couple here that are barely moving and for the most part are not moving at all. Those are dead spirochetes for the most part. The vast majority of them are just laying there as still as could be. So I find this very interesting and I think it's very exciting for dentists to be able to use something so that if they do have a bloody prophy, it's not a dangerous thing.